I'm Amber Cook. Welcome to my podcast, The Dragonfly Connection. In this third season, I've taken the theme from season one, which was called The Holistic Healing Connection, and merged it with a theme from season two of The Dragonfly Connection. So now, join me every Wednesday for open, honest, inspiring, and healing conversations with people who face their own health and life challenges, worked through them, and now are on a mission to help you live a healthier, more fulfilling life. My hope is that at each episode leaves you more empowered and inspired, no matter where you are on your life and healing journey. This episode is sponsored by HealingWays.com. Find a holistic wellness professional and resources to help you on your healing journey. That's HealingWaze.com. This is my 100th podcast episode, you guys. I feel super proud, grateful, and humbled all the time, every day. Thank you for listening and supporting this passion project of mine. Before we dive in, I'd like to just give you a quick reminder. I do this because I love it. I love helping people in any way that I can, especially in the realm of healing. But there are a lot of costs associated with creating a podcast. So to be able to continue doing this into 2023 and beyond, I really need your help. And you don't have to spend any money to help me, unless you want to, of course. (laughs) You can do what you want. But after listening today, please share one of your favorite episodes with a friend or many friends by either hitting the share button on your app to either text or email them, or you can copy the link and share it in a text or an email, or you can even copy the link and share it on your Facebook and Twitter pages. Just make sure it's a live link so they're able to just click on it and go straight to it. Or you can even share it in Messenger. There's so many ways. Now, if sharing isn't your thing, and I know it's not everyone's and it takes work and time, and you'd rather just kick down some cash, donations are greatly appreciated always. There's a little donate button on my podcast page of my website, or you can Venmo me at H, capital H, capital W, A-Z-E. That's H-W-A-Z-E. And, of course, a review is always, always, always always appreciated and it really does help okay so now that we've gotten that out of the way let's chat i've got so much good stuff to share on this hundredth episode if you're following along on social media or in any of my facebook pages groups whatever you know that this episode was supposed to land last week well due to technical difficulties for real my computer was um basically out of memory and dying and excessive heat because I don't have like central air and now in Oregon we have these little heat waves. I really just couldn't get the episode out. And then the wise words of Petty Hill, a past guest of mine, came to mind. It was something along the lines of, don't stress if you don't have to. And I thought, well, I don't have to stress about this. And so I didn't. I just let it go. And wow, what a novel concept, right? And just like usual, when I let it go, the universe provided. Now I say universe, but you can insert any name here. God, higher power, Allah, the divine, goddess, so many I'm leaving out. To me, it all means the same. As I was going with the flow, I was starting to wonder if my original plan for this episode was right anyway. Was it the right way to go? And I was also starting to lose focus. So again, I let that go. I let the worry go and waited to see what just would come up. And lo and behold, I have a lot more direction for today. You're about ready to hear what I feel is a pretty awesome episode. And it came to me pretty easily. When I say easily, though, it wasn't actually easy. It didn't just like drop into, well, it did just drop into my lap, but it was hard. And I did have to work for it. In the sense that I had to like work out what I experienced that helped bring this direction to me. In a second, you're going to laugh or chuckle even just a little bit. If you know me, you know I'd rather that you chuckle than feel sorry for me. Please do not feel sorry for me for this little story that I'm about ready to share. Because I don't feel sorry for me. It's part of, it's part of who I am. And I've done a lot of work so I can share this in a way that I feel shouldn't make you feel sorry for me, if that makes sense. Okay, so anyway, last night I had my first big 
PTSD flashback in over a year. I'll wait for the applause. I'm just kidding. (laughs) I don't expect you to applause for it, but just don't feel sorry for me. It was so bad. And I'm still trying to figure out what triggered it. Okay, so before I go any further, I want to add a caveat to a couple terms terms I'm I use interchangeably. PTSD and C PTSD. Sometimes it's just easier to say PTSD because people know what it is. You know what it is. The main difference between the two though is PTSD usually occurs after a single traumatic event or a very close set of traumatic events that happen, like in the case of, we'll just use the one everyone knows, like in war, you know, you go through several different incidences during a short period of time. That would be, I believe, now I'm no professional, mental health professional, but I believe that would be still just PTSD. While CPTSD is associated with repeated trauma, and sometimes over a long extent of time, the the incidents don't have to even be related or connected to each other. In my case, that's, that's why I have CPTSD. I'm still struggling with the phrase or using the phrase I have or I am in this type of conversation or quote unquote diagnosis, because I know that that can be detrimental to the subconscious to hear that. It's like reaffirming that you have something that you don't want. But for clarity, I'm just going to stick with that I have it for now. You get it, right? I hope you get it. All right. So back to the lecture at hand. And when I said that, did anyone else just hear Dr. Dre in their head? Or is it just me? As usual, when I'm just going on, I, I definitely just like to go off track a little bit. Anyway, seriously, back to my recent PTSD gift. And I'm not sure what triggered it, but whenever I have an ailment, I don't ever take it at face value. To me, for instance, a headache isn't just my body saying I need ibuprofen or Tylenol. It's a signal from my body saying something is off. And then I take that signal and listen, and I try to figure it out. Maybe I ate something that my body doesn't like. Maybe I'm dehydrated or I need to stretch. Maybe I need more sleep. There are so many reasons I and you might get a headache. And the same goes for our mental health issues. So this just happened last night and I am still in the midst of trying to figure it out. Why did this happen? And so far I can only think of one thing. I've been doing intermittent fasting. I'll talk more about that in a minute, but I've been doing this again for about three weeks now, if I had to guess. And last night, because I cut my eating window shorter than usual and also finished it off in a light dinner. I was pretty hungry, so maybe that's it. Also, I've been chatting with God and my guides a lot lately, asking them for more clarity and direction as I'm still feeling a bit lost in the whole career part of my life's journey. So I don't know. These are just theories of mine. I'm still working it out, but I'm not going to go into all the details of my flashback, but when I say that it hit hard, and it hit real fast. I mean it. It was like just out of the blue. I was in bed chatting with my husband as we usually do before we drift off. I was complaining about how hot it was and thinking that the reason behind my current sleeping issues were was the heat. He asked, well, why are you wearing so many pajamas? Why don't you put on something cooler, lighter, less? And that's all it took. After the lights went out, I was trying to drift off to sleep, wasn't thinking much about his comment at first, but then all of a sudden I flashed on why I don't feel comfortable sleeping with less clothing or none at all. And not all the time, but the majority of the time. And it all came back flooding back into my head, like just so, like I said, fast and hard. It all started after the time that a man broke into my house in the middle of the night and tried to rape me. He was climbing on top of me in the middle of the night while I was sleeping and I was wearing very little clothing. Now, I've mentioned this story before. If you know it, you know that I I fought him off. I escaped my house. I don't know if I've shared before, but then I was running down the street to my mom's house who lived a few houses down with nothing but a t-shirt 
on my body and a baby in my arms. And in that moment, I'll just say like, I thought this just, just now, but in that moment, I was really glad it was nighttime. I wasn't thinking that now then, but I am thinking of that now. Okay. So yeah, I can laugh about that. Cause again, I've done a ton of trauma work on this incident already. Most recently EMDR, which really helped me process it. But what I realized last night is that I don't think I have really processed all the trauma, the trauma of what happened in the aftermath, the days and weeks and possibly months. I don't, I don't remember yet. Cause I have, I think like I must've blocked that out, but what happened after that, that one event, there was a lot that came with it. The trauma of not feeling safe to go to bed, like I, I have talked this out with my therapist and I've even worked on the, it through EMDR, but there's definitely more there. And this was the flashback I had last night. It was like I was reliving the days and weeks afterwards in full, vibrant color, like it was right now in my current life. It was such a trip. It was scary and brought on lots of fear, lots of sadness. It was a rough night. I cried a lot last night. I cried some more this today when talking to my husband about it. And it is, it's still there. I can feel it. So for today, I'm letting the feelings come as they might, not judging myself, not worrying about it because I know it's something that I can work through. I'm going to be journaling about it. I'm talking about it right now with you. I'm going to continue to talk about it with my husband. And when I see my counselor next week, I'm going to talk about it with her. Just keep talking about it. That's what I'm, I'm really like suggesting to everyone. I'm a talker. I know not everybody's a talker, but it doesn't do any good if we hold it and if we, we need to talk about it. So I'm going to talk with her about it. And I think I'm going to ask for another round of EMDR. I think it's necessary. I know EMDR isn't for everyone, but for me, it has been a miracle treatment hard, scary, sometimes feeling like almost too much, but so effective for me personally. Again, it may not be the best for everyone, but I highly recommend it. And I highly, highly recommend that you go with someone who's got some great reviews, that is a personal uh, reference, and knowing that it's not easy work and it's not always going to feel good but it is, it is really powerful deep work. And if you're unfamiliar with a wet EMDR or eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, long, long title is, it's a psychotherapy treatment that enables you to heal from the symptoms like flashbacks and more. And I will talk more about that in a minute and emotional distress that comes with trauma. I'll include a link to an EMDR website that I found if you're interested in learning more. So yeah, Today is a weird day. I'm feeling a little defeated, yes, and also triumphant. Yes, I had a flashback that's causing me some distress, but it didn't turn into an anxiety attack like it may have in the past. And I'm able to recognize what happened, and I think I have some ideas on what triggered it. I feel so much clearer than I would in the past. I feel like every time I process and clear a trauma from my subconscious, it frees up more space for healing and space to fill up with more good stuff. And sometimes it just brings in, um, you know, room for some of that deeper buried stuff to come forward as well. So yeah, I have some more work to do, but it is really not as hard as it used to be. Back to last night in the midst of the flashback episode and the insomnia that followed, I had a huge aha. Well, I had several ahas because I ended up being up most of the night. But a really big one, a big one for me and one that I definitely want to talk about on this. And it's because I think I think it can help some of you who might struggle with emotional eating. Almost immediately after I realized what was happening, that primitive part of my brain, the part that just wants me to survive, it's its, it's sole purpose is just to have me survive, said, you need to go eat, go eat something full of fat and eat a lot of it. It was almost as if I was having an argument with that part of my brain. Seriously. It's something I haven't experienced before. It was weird. And please don't hit the stop button. I'm not crazy. 
I mean, well, maybe a little crazy, but not in that way, if you know what I'm saying. I'm pretty sure I'm of sound mind, maybe bruised, scarred, and a bit strange, but not insane. I have, I have, I have not had a clinical diagnosis of insanity and I don't believe I'm going to. <laughs> it was, it was like my brain and my body were begging me to just eat, like yelling at me. And now I realize it's because I was having a mental fight with two different parts of my brain. And this is, this is something that happens. This is a struggle for all of us on a healing journey. Or even, I mean, it's a struggle, even if you're not on a healing journey, but if you're on a healing journey, like you're more aware of the struggle. They were literally arguing with each other because the more evolved parts know that I need to feel the feelings, work through them, and use healthy tools along the way, not stuff my face. <laughs> While the primitive part knows that doing those things, really, you know, those three things I just mentioned are not easy. And it really just wants my body to survive. It knows that at some point in my life or several points throughout my life, food was a tool I used to numb out and cover up the pain, the fear, sadness, etc. But guess what? I did succumb to it. I ended up getting out of bed and eating a snack, two snacks, not horribly unhealthy snacks, but just it shouldn't be eating in the middle of the night. I know that. I know that logically. My brain kept telling me that was the answer. So I didn't binge. I got up and ate in the middle of the night. Like, you're not supposed to do that. It's not good for our bodies. I haven't done it in a long, long time, like many years. But I will admit it was once something I would do when I was under a ton of stress. I remember doing it almost as if I was in a trance-like state. It was weird. And so I'm reflecting back on that today. And I don't, I don't want to go there again. And so obviously I don't feel awesome today for many reasons. I mean, mostly physically, but I feel like I have some clarity on my emotional eating in general, not night eating, but just the feeling of wanting to eat when I'm stressed, overwhelmed, or sad. It's something that has been a big part of my life for a long time. And it's something that I've been working on as a part of my trauma treatment counseling. And I am very proud to say and to tell you all that I rarely use food as a coping tool anymore. And on the rare occasion that it does happen, like last night, I don't beat myself up over it anymore. I just don't. I just say it happened and I moved on. I move on in the past. And I'm sure there's people that can relate. Like it, it's this start of a vicious cycle, right? You, you overeat and you feel bad about yourself or you eat because of it. You're not because you're hungry, but just for emotional reasons or a ton of different reasons, but you eat knowing that it's not good for your body. It's not healthy to eat like that. And then you feel bad about yourself and you beat yourself up and it's depression and it just goes over and over and over. It's a cycle. Then you eat more because you're depressed. You know the drill. It may not happen to you, but you know someone that's happened to, or maybe it's happened to you in the past. And thankfully, it's no longer an issue for you. Speaking of that, issues, you know, usually a lot of times that will also cause weight issues, right? And I have yet to lose tons of weight, even though I'm, I'm, I've gotten a handle on this emotional eating. But I am confident it'll happen eventually. In fact, I'm living in a way in which I expect it to happen. And yeah, I am like slowly losing weight over time, like extremely slowly. <laughs> like, uh, I don't even know because I don't really like fully keep track of it because it's so slow, but I know it's happening. I don't diet and I don't think of food in general, like bad or good terms. I mean, unless it's artificial sweeteners, poisonous chemicals, and for me personally, gluten, but that's a whole another topic for another podcast. And actually one that we've talked a lot about in several of my podcasts with a lot of different guests. But most of the time I do eat whole, organic, unprocessed foods. Most people look at me and are just like, I can't believe you eat like that. It's so different. I mean, there, I, there's stuff I just don't eat because... Just no, I know it's not good for my body. We don't out, eat out very often. 
I very, I rarely drink alcohol. I, I was going to say very, but it's summertime. I feel like I'm drinking a little bit more lately. And that's like one or two drinks a week. Right now. Um, all in all, I have a pretty healthy diet. I exercise regularly, like almost every day for real. I feel like I always have to like try to convince people of that because they look at my body and, and I just, you know, I don't look like someone that exercises a lot, but just that comment I made in general is something that needs to change and I know is changing in society. Um, but anyway, I take my supplements, I take a ton and with the help of my cannabis tincture, which I've talked about a lot on social media and different podcast episodes, I sleep okay most of the time. As you probably also know, I do a ton of mental and spiritual self-care, such as counseling, like I've mentioned, energy work, meditation, hypnosis, just to name a few. I'm open to anything. I practice intermittent fasting on and off. It's not like a lifelong thing for me. Um, last probably five years-ish, I you know do it for a while and then I get off, something happens, whatever. But my goal is to stay on it permanently this time. Yes, I would love if it helped me release some of the weight, but I do it more for energy, sleep, digestion, hormone issues, and sugar regulation. I'm not extreme about it. I do the eat for 10 hours a day thing, fast for 14. Um, My my eating window is usually 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. I mean, it's, it's very easy for me. For me, it's easy. May not be for someone else, but... As I'm telling you this, I don't even know why I have fallen off track in the in the past, but it happens. It's probably another topic for another episode of my like all or nothing mentality that I definitely have am working on overcoming. And I'm doing really well on it too, by the way. All right. So the reason I'm saying all of this is to remind you that sometimes, a lot of the time actually, less than a lot than all the diet industry people want you to know. Holding on to excess weight is more than calories in, calories out. And in many cases, it's not just about the quality of food you're eating either. And I feel like I'm a really great example of that. I, along with one of my life coaches and my counselor, believe my body is stubbornly holding on to a source of protection, the excess weight. I even joked, maybe just yesterday even, with my husband that I would probably be able to outstarve everyone on the show alone based solely on the fact that my body isn't ready to let go yet of this excess weight. Side note, if you haven't watched alone, I think it's like a discovery show or something, but you can find it on a lot of different streaming platforms. We watch it on Hulu right now. Google it alone. It's one of Logan and I's guilty pleasures. We're actually kind of addicted. Anyway, so yeah, we believe that we, like me, my counselor, my coach, believe that most of my weight issues have very little to do with what society tells us makes us fat. And this might also be true for you. And if not for you, for someone you love or care about, trauma and more specifically PTSD have a high association with obesity. Here's an excerpt from an NIH study and an article titled The Weight of Traumatic Stress, a prospective study of post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms and weight status in women. I'll include the link to the show notes in case you want to read the whole thing. But in conclusion, they say experiencing PTSD symptoms is associated with increased risk of becoming overweight or obese and PTS symptoms onset alters BMI trajectories over time. The presence of PTSD symptoms should raise clinician concerns about physical health problems that may develop and prompt closer attention to weight status. So what I'm hearing is medical professionals really need to pay attention to what's going on in our mind before they're just telling us to lose weight or just making it so simplified sounding or even personal trainers or dietitians or nutritionists, like what happens in our mind affects everything that happens in our bodies. You know that I know that you know that if you've listened to any of my past podcasts, I've had, I've had a lot of guests talk about the somatic part of our mental health. I've talked about it. We know it. I don't understand yet why part of the medical industry 
more conventional like doesn't address that like they should, but that's just the way it is. And that's just one study. If you're curious about this topic, just Google weight gain and PTSD or weight gain and trauma. There are a ton of studies and theories. Most come down to the to healing the pain that the trauma or traumas created and stored in your mind and body. It can't be buried. It can't be ignored. It can't be swept under the rug. That pain will surface in all kinds of ways and will create things in your mind and your body that will hold you back in life. It may not hold you back completely, but it will prevent you from living a fully experienced life. It just will. Excess weight and the seemingly impossibility of losing it might not be how unhealed trauma shows up for you, though. Instead, it may be one of the following. Anxiety or panic attacks that occur in what would be considered normal situations. A feeling of shame. An innate feeling that you're bad, worthless, or without importance. Suffering from chronic or ongoing depression. Practicing avoidance of people places or things that may be related to a traumatic event. This can also include an avoidance of unpleasant emotions in general. Flashbacks, nightmares, and body memories regarding the traumatic event. Addiction and eating disorders in an attempt to escape or numb negative emotions. You could have an eating disorder but not be overweight. Sleeping issues, including trouble going to sleep or staying asleep. Suffering from feelings of detachment or feeling dead inside, disassociation, to really disconnect in a situation or a conversation, hypervigilance, meaning a constant feeling of being on guard, suicidal thoughts or actions, uncontrollable anger, self-harm, cutting, mutilation, not being able to tolerate conflicts, unexplained or irrational fears of people, places, or things, that's 15 additional ways that it may show up. And out of this list, I've experienced 14, 14 of them at different times in my life and along my healing journey. And now I'm very happy to report that out of that 14, I only still experience five on occasion. And most have only gone away within this last year. I lived with so much of that thinking that I was okay. But then I took a deeper dive into my healing work and realized there was a lot more work to do. So now you've heard me and, and many of my past guests saying that the healing work never ends. And yes, that is true. But I am proof that it gets easier. I promise you that. But it is work. It's work that you have to carve out time for. Work that you have to make a commitment to. You have to make it a priority. What's more important? Seriously, stop and think about that for a minute. What's more important? So now it's your turn for some more self-reflection because that's the purpose of this whole podcast for others to share their healing stories and experiences to help inspire, teach, and empower you on your own healing journey. I'm going to give you a list of questions and I encourage you to hit pause or come back later if you're driving and get a piece of paper or your journal write them down, and then answer them for yourselves. Be completely honest. Find a quiet space where you can really check in, tune in, and answer and, and feel the feelings that come up with those answers. And if you're working with a professional healer, coach, or therapist, I highly encourage you to share the answers with them too. If you're not driving, hit pause and grab that paper or journal right now. And now, before writing, I just want you to listen and reflect. I'll put these questions in the show notes too if you're more visual like me or you can go back, rewind, and listen to me say each one. Whatever works best for you. We're all different. That's okay. That's what makes us cool, <laughs> our differences. All right, so number one, do you recognize any of the symptoms or experiences in that list of 15 in yourself? Which ones? And again, if you can't remember what those are too, they, those will also be in the show notes. So you just scroll up, scroll up or down to those. And I've listed them out for you. So you can go through each one, just looking at it, reading it yourself. Next question. Where are you stuck in life? Like what areas? Be specific. Health, career, relationships, fulfillment. What kind of support do you need? From what or who? And what does that look like? Have you found tools that help you? in the past, or even now? If so, what are they and why aren't you using them? 
Or if you're using them, why aren't they working? How do you celebrate your wins? Is it something that you feel benefits you? Like a, if it affects your health negatively, you might want to find another way to celebrate. Why do you start treatments, programs, plans, whatever you want to call them, meant to benefit you mentally or physically, and then not finish them? What do you think is holding you back from living your best life? What can you do to change or eliminate those things altogether? Really want you to give this one a hard think. Where have you found the most success so far in your healing journey? Who inspires you the most on your healing journey? My advice is to follow that person, read their books or publications, listen to them, watch them, learn all you can about them and their work. And I want to caution you on this. Don't put them on a pedestal. Do not put them on a pedestal. They are humans. Don't do it. Don't make them your guru. You don't need a guru, but learn from them. What have they done for themselves or others that you can do or can benefit from? And what are the top three things you have done to help yourself? What is one thing you would say to someone you love who feels the way you feel about yourself in your life right now or have felt when you're in, you're feeling worse about your life? Now, I want you to say that last one to yourself, the answer to that last question to yourself. Maybe even turn it into your own personal mantra. Put it on your mirror. Look at it. Look at yourself in the eye. Say it every day. Put it on your phone, wherever you see it. Make, make yourself a personal mantra. And I want you to know that you are worthy and you deserve to live a joyful, peaceful, full, healthy life. Maybe that can be your personal mantra too. Pick one, make it, make it yours, make it feel right to you, resonate with you. Self-awareness is so huge when it comes to helping you get to that full, healthy life. I know that you want to live your best, most healthy life. That's why you're listening to this podcast. So why not take just a little more time for yourself after listening to this or carve out time tomorrow or this weekend, sometime really soon and answer these questions. Then recommit or commit for the first time to becoming more self-aware and getting to the bottom of what's holding you back. I'm not just saying this for you. I'm saying this as a reminder to myself because of what just happened in my life. Because what happened to us in the past doesn't have to have a big negative impact on our present and our future. It will have an impact. Hopefully it'll be more positive than negative. Hopefully we'll be able to turn the negative to the positive because that really does and can happen. True healing is possible. I know without a doubt it's possible for me and it is possible for you. So now in the spirit of this being a special episode, it's probably time to announce that I've landed on a new professional title and you're some of the first people to hear this. Healing Guide. It's in addition to Holistic Patient Advocate. And although I'm still working on the particulars of offering one-on-one guidance in, in this new way, it's not really new, but in a different way than I've done in the past, I'm open to start working with people immediately. If that's you or someone you know, you can contact me through my website or message me on social media. All my links are in the show notes in case you're unfamiliar. And soon I will have a whole website page describing my services and methods of working together so you can look over it and really think on it some more or send it to your friends. But again, if someone needs my help right now and you're feeling it and or you think that you know someone's going to need it, reach out, have them reach out. We'll figure something out. I, th- I don't know if you've seen, uh, I posted something recently or there's a meme going around on social media. And it was like, you know, sometimes you don't have to have all your ducks in the ro- in a row. I can't even remember the rest. <laughs> you don't have to have all your ducks in the row. Okay. Just sometimes you just have to have a few ducks. And, oh, it was something like run across the street with them. I'm terrible at retelling that stuff. But yeah, just grab a couple ducks and run across the street. The the rest will work itself out. And don't forget to join us in the Dragonfly Connection community on Facebook. It's a private group for fans on this or of this podcast, guests that you've heard on here, and anyone wanting more connection and support on their healing journey. 
it's a really great group full of love, full of support. Um, we're bumping up the resources more and more every day. And if you haven't already joined, the link to do so is in the show notes. If you have any questions or comments about this episode or other episodes, you can post them in there, in that group, and even ask me or the podcast guest questions directly in there too. It's pretty fun, and I hope to see you in there. Sending you tons of love today and throughout your healing journey. Be well, friends. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Our stories may be different, but we all have one thing in common. We're all trying to figure out how to navigate life on this planet, and none of us have it completely figured out. No matter what you're going through in your life, just know that you are never really alone. Come back every Wednesday for more inspiration and connection, and follow me on Instagram at the Dragonfly Mama so we can stay in touch between episodes.